Yeah, first of all, it's really um, a mindset. So for me with with working with Ed, first of all, it was the mindset that my business can be an investment um, because I think, you know, there's a, there's a lot of business brokers out there and, and a lot of theory out there that, you know, you, you work in a business um, to sell it, you know. Um, you know, there's a lot of business coaches out there, for example, in a, in a partic particular franchise that I won't mention, but they, you know, they all talk about, um, you know, the one pers purpose of a business is to build it up and sell it. So when you start talking to Ed, you, it, it turns that theory on its head and says, okay, well, if, if you can get a better return on your business and set up your business to, in a way that it can get a better return on investment than um, property or the share market, so Ed's argument is, um, why do you sell it? And mm -hmm. and it, and it's purely focused on results. So Did that resonated with you, or, or were you questioning the fact, given that at that point in time your business was fairly heavily built around yourself? Would you say? Well, it was like uh, it was like a, a lot a lot of guys who start out like myself and like Ed did. It's all built around you. Um, mm -hmm. Ed talks about the the uh, butterfly catcher versus the garden that attracts the butterflies. So, you know, in the early days, we all grow our businesses just by sheer referrals. And um, we do all the, you know, we do all the, the, the grinding and the minding and the finding. Um, and if you take uh, the finder out of it, um, then, you, you know, you often don't have the referrals and, and you don't have the growth. So Ed really in the discovery session really turns a lot of traditional thinking on its head and solely focuses on really two factors. One, can your business um, give you a, a good return on investment compared to other asset sources? And secondly, can your business, can you set up your business to run without you? Um, now, you know, if you don't have the right mindset to believe that your business can run without you, um, then then you really need to get to stage one. Um, you know, stage one is, I think Dr. Stephen Covey talks about, you know, private victory and public victory, or there's two creations. <laughs> so you've really, Ed really mentors you to say, well, it can be done. Um, you know, I've done it. This is how it's done. Um, and you've got to get it through your mind first. Um, that's the, that's the first thing. Um, but the second thing is purely focus on a business sense is um, let's get a good return in investment. Um, on this business and you go to work every day, as Ed said, to work on the balance sheet. A, a lot of us and including myself and other accountants, you know, as soon as we have more staff, uh, more systems, more procedures, we, we think of a P and L we think, Oh, that's an expense. Oh, that's just another expense. So you've really got to change your whole mindset around um, working on the business and building an investment um, over the longer term, not short term. So yeah. yeah hopefully. So Ed, can can you give uh, anyone watching who would like to undertake their own discovery session with themselves now, what the steps would be to, to really getting that underway? Absolutely. It's, it's not that difficult. Um, you just got to ask yourself, you know, if it's a husband and wife team, just ask your wife and yourself, you know, what, what do you want your lifestyle to look like when you're 65? What, do you, what income do you want to earn when you're 65? Um, what amount of work do you want to do? Um, and then based on that, uh, we work backwards from there. So, um, and then we then design that business uh, instead of just letting the business take you uh, wherever the wind blows, so to speak, mm -hmm. that you actually design your life, you design your business and you design the kind of income that you want and the kind of lifestyle that you want. I mean, I, I personally wanted more choices in my life and I knew that the only way I could get more choices in my life is to have a passive income. And the mm -hmm. best way and the quickest way to build passive income is to invest it back into your own business and, um, and, and structure in such a way that it ran without you. And, and that's what I've done and it's achievable. It's, we've, we're in the right kind of business 
Um, the problem is that there's been some very good marketers out there who've um, sort of brainwashed us into thinking that compliance is, is, is dying and compliance isn't a very good product and people don't value it and so forth and so forth. But compliance is the only uh, business that's growing. Uh, they, they're also saying that it's dying, but it's not dying. It's actually growing. Mm. It's growing because we, you know, our population's growing by 250, 300,000 a year, and our immigration policy is quite, quite healthy. So whenever skilled migrants come into this country, they all get a job and they all need to do tax returns. So the compliance pie is, is growing. And I keep saying that's a great business model because that's the only business model that I know that the government drives business to your door because it's illegal not to do a tax return. It's recession proof. And all you need to do is to, um, or, or we need to do is to manage it efficiently so that it's profitable and, uh, and we don't need to go chasing for new business. Uh, the business is, is, a new, is pretty close to annuity in nature. Um, so what better business um, can you have that the government drives it to your door and it's as near annuity as you can get and the pie is growing Mm. And whenever, as long as there's tax in the country, there's always going to be tax changes. And when then, the, whenever there's tax changes, so you always need an accountant. So there's been a lot of confusion created by a lot of people out there. And generally, they're they, they're from people who had a vested interest. They were either trying to sell you their products or sell you their services or something, and they misrepresent what our industry is. And because of that, it's created a lot of confusion and. Uh, that's led a lot of accountants to believe that, you know, at the end of their working life, they need to flog it off and get as much as they can and, uh, and not, not retain an interest in it. But naturally, if you don't have systems in place, then you if you built the business around you, mm -hmm. then you have to sell it. There is no other option. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what I'm saying is don't, don't run it like a partnership, run it like a corporation mm -hmm. where we separate ownership from, um, from um, from your labour, from your uh, skill, um, and in a in a partnership model, it doesn't work because just because um, you're an owner, um, you think you've got a say in everything, even though you may not have the skills or the experience to get involved in um, certain aspects of your business. But because you're a partner and you're an owner, you have a say in everything, and it doesn't work. And, uh, and if you turn it into a corporation where you separate the skills out from the shareholding, so some people are more CEO, some people are more COO, um, some people are more CTO or CFO. Mm -hmm. And if we each stay in our flow, in our area of expertise, and let each other run our areas, then, and then hopefully together you'll produce a profit and then you pay a dividend based on your shareholding that much that works much better and uh, and I've proven it and it works and it's much more effective than a partnership model and I'm not talking about the structure I'm not talking about the legal structure I'm talking about the management mm. uh, the way you run the business yeah yeah okay so going through that process Jamie what were what were the highlight moments for you coming out the back end of that discovery session and what what was your sort of realigned focus from that point yeah the main thing to mention brenton is um and i know this will resonate with you know hundreds of accountants <laughs> is is the realization that um that you don't have to be the central person to run the firm um, so it's almost a humbling process. Um, you've got to realize that the firm um, can run without you. That, that, that's the most important concept to realize because, um, and Ed shows you how that can be done. Um, that's a, a real choke point in the discovery session that, it, that he'll show you how that can be done. Um, and the other thing is, I think, you know, Ed mentioned is one, once you realise how that can be done, then it's really important to get that structure and foundation of 
teams and operational systems in place. One of the things you've always said, Ed, is um, you know it's okay to it's okay to scale, but get your foundations right first because otherwise you're going to scale problems. So I'd I'd been down that path. I'd I'd try to scale and um, I'd try to do this and try to do that um, in my own business, and I I was only scaling problems. So it's really, really important for the accountants and the, and the, the and whoever's listening that you get those foundations right. And like Ed said, even though you're a small business, act like a big one. You know, so Absolutely. put systems and processes and people in place, even if you have to wear a lot of hats at the start. Um, uh, make sure you get the foundations right because if if you don't do that and you go to scale, um, then you're only going to scale problems. So. So if we talk about the discovery session where we're at this stage, because I know we're going to get into the mm. foundations and the, the systems and the processes Yeah. at this stage, I think we want whoever's uh, watching to, to take an opportunity now to take stock of where they are mm. um, and to, to really follow those steps that Ed outlined before is, is really look, you start to look at your business from an investment perspective. Where, where do you want to be? when you're 65, what, what lifestyle do you want to be living at that stage of your life? And how is your business going to provide for that? Mm. Can it provide for that? And in, in its current form, is it going to be able, able to do it? If not, we need to start putting some numbers on that, that mm. future position and start working backwards yeah. from there to, to really kick this journey off. Is that, uh, is that fair to say, Ed? Uh, absolutely, that you hit the nail on the head. Um, you just got to design your life and it's all, it's all there to be design, um, designed mm. because of the, 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 the industry we're in. It's annuity in nature. The government drives it to your door and we deal with accountants who are uh, reasonably easy to deal with. They're, they're educated and easy people to deal with. And, uh, and you know, the systems are all there. We, we, we just got to put, put everything together mm. and it's all, it's all quite achievable. Yeah. Right. So Absolutely. for everyone watching, this is your opportunity now to uh, really take some time. So whether you're going to do it straight away or you're going to lock it into your calendar now, take some time to, even if you have to rewind this video and go through those steps that it outlined um, just prior, uh, just earlier in terms of what you should be doing to really take yourself through this discovery process. Now, there are also some continuing videos from this video, mm -hmm. which uh, Jamie and myself will dive into some of the other areas of the discovery process that he went through. Yeah. But uh, really at this stage, pause the video, stop the video and spend some time understanding where you'd like your life to be when you're 65 and is your business in a position to get you there if not we need to recalculate some numbers and start working backwards from there and thank you so much for sharing uh, that part of your journey and the the journey that you start your firms on i think it's a brilliant place to start and jamie looking forward to uh to hearing more on how you took sky accountants through this this part of the journey as well absolutely yeah yeah well, perhaps i'll go first but yeah we'll um I'll, we'll have a lot of exercises and tasks that, um, as you said, Brenton will help will help people um, really dig down into the detail of this process. Um, you know, Ed's outlined some of the, the bigger concepts that we do, but we'll certainly take them through the detail so that they can can um, you know w wash out what we need to achieve in this section of the of the course. Yeah, brilliant, Ed. Yeah, thank, thanks, um, and thanks for having me, Brenton. Uh, it's an absolute honour to uh, share some of the things that I've experienced with everybody, and I, I look forward to uh, continuing to do that. Ed, the pleasure is all ours. <laughs> uh, we look forward to hearing more of your learnings uh, in step two. But for now, let's uh, begin with the end of mind, or at least go through our discovery session and really understand where we want to take our business. So until the next video, Spend some quality time doing that. Thanks, guys. All right. Bye. Thanks, Brent.